Uh, so hi all, uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the session on application modernizations. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, so today we would be talking about you know why why do we even need to modernize our applications? What does modernization mean in today's context? What it meant in yesterday's context, and where the world is heading towards, and uh, you know the challenges, the best practices. Uh, you know. So let's let me uh, we'll try and cover most of these aspects with some examples and also some of the case studies. So, um, so hi all, and uh, today uh, my name is Bharat. I uh, I head the customer engineering here at Nevis Solutions. We are a premier Google Cloud partner, and uh, we've been helping our clients in the application modernization journeys for about uh, two two and a half years now. And I also have uh, Adish Prabhu, who is a senior solution architect in application modernization with Nevis Solutions, uh, who's pretty much been uh, putting the whole approach, uh, you know, and doing the implementations hands hands on with his team in the space of application modernization. So very warm welcome to you, uh, Adish. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. So with that, I think let's uh, get started, right? It, it bring, brings us to the you know, whole uh, basic question on uh, basically what are the, uh, why, why do we even need to modernize an application, right? So typically there are enough applications which have been being built over the years. Uh, the customers are already there. You know, they have been hosted. They're working fine. Maybe some challenges are there, right? But why why is there a need uh, even you know to to modernize your application? So what are the challenges that are there in building and maintaining legacy systems? So if you could start with that, uh, Adish, I think that would set the whole context for our audience here, and then maybe we can discuss about how to how, how do we overcome these uh, challenges. Sure, sure. Thanks, Bharat. So uh, some of the main characteristics or the challenges that are marred with this uh, legacy systems are uh, that they are very tightly coupled. So, and uh, other things, like uh, other uh, challenges are that they are infrastructure constrained or resource constrained. So what happens when applications are tightly constrained is uh, uh, they, if, if I say have a change to make in one part of the solution, uh, the developer needs to know all the features in other part of the solution such that a change that I make will not affect any other part of the solution that I haven't even touched. I mean, it's it's a pain point that uh, uh, we see in all uh, almost all customers who are still using legacy applications. They are so tightly coupled that I make a change in this. Uh, I make a small change. I still have to run all my tests. I still have to deploy my entire solution. And these monolith applications, if they are large enough, they take a lot of time to just get a small change into production. And uh, with the resource constraint, so when I say these are resource constraints, so the, usually these applications are hosted on-prem. So the on-prem infrastructure would have been designed considering the uh, scope that was given to them at the time of uh, uh, designing design phase of this solution. And uh, whenever we have to make a big change, so we have to still go back to the design phase where we decided okay for this number of uh, users i have i need this amount of uh, resources and now since i am going to bring a change which can bring in more uh, uh, users to my solution or my application i need to go i need to do everything again where i need to procure i, I need to start with uh, understanding how many resources i need i need to procure these resources, I need to buy these resources, I need to install them, I need to make sure they'll work fine in the uh, infrastructure. Uh, so very reactive approach. So yeah, very reactive yeah. Approach. It's, it's, it's a very, very reactive approach. So, and say in, 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 if there is um, good response to my application, I, I don't have that capacity to infinitely scale. So I am still restricted by my infrastructure or my design decisions. So it, even if there is a change or uh, even if I see that there is going to be a increase in usage of my site, the time that it takes to make it useful to my clients is very slow and very large. So these are the challenges. I mean, I uh, think all the monolith applications are usually very tightly coupled. Mm -hmm. They have resource constraints. They are very slow. Uh, changes are slower to bring to the market and deploying them is difficult. And in addition to this, there's very less agility when it comes to the application itself. 
i mean if if say tomorrow i decide okay there's a new technology or a new uh, hardware that i could use to uh, prepare or just modify the solution it's it's not agile enough to change quickly i mean i i i have to spend a lot of time i have to spend a lot of uh, 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 like you even to do a small poc on my proposed solution i need to procure hardware and all all those uh, nitty gritties and it, it takes it, it takes time i mean i i can't really modernize or uh, i can't really change in an instance so, i can't scale so even even i have seen it in my uh, past experience right so while uh, the world has kind of now pretty much shifted to you know agile ways of uh, uh, implementations as agile, agile project management i've been an agile coach myself where we've been trying to bring in this cultural as well as the you know implementation change but however as much as you practice all your agile you know whether it's scrum kanban you know scaled yeah. agile any framework if you're still building your applications in a very monolithic way which are deeply coupled to the underlying infrastructure which have a very long cycles you may have multiple sprints but unless you are building it in a very modernized way at the end of the sprint there's nothing you can actually make a release to the market right which yeah. is where the competition yeah. lies so agility comes when you start modernizing your applications right very but true very true the next question so modernization has meant many different things over the you know last 2 uh, 3 decades right so right yeah. when we moved from paper to computer that was modernization then so in te- today's era if you're talking about modernization what exactly is it according to you uh, in in modernization i mean when i when i talk about modernization with my clients i don't uh, it, it's not a stage i mean it's it's like a phase you you need to be in a uh, state where you can challenge the adversities or you can take the challenges that come head on so you need to uh, move into a technology that will help you uh, take take these challenges i mean uh, say if if you are a legacy customer and uh, you have selected a solution which was good like 5 years ago that may not be the case now i mean you have to evolve i mean the uh, modernization is about evolving to a stage where you can catch up with your uh, existing or uh, your current competitors as well as keep up with new challenges that come your way i mean if you if you look at uh, what has happened in digital technology so if you have been long enough in it you would realize that you would have, you would have moved on from say programming and compiling on punch cards to hardware uh, servers to vms to now containers so that is modernization at different stages your applications or your uh, enterprise system would have gone through all of these so as long as you are in uh, you make sure you are in the right technology for the right time uh, i i think that step or the evolution is modernization so you it never stops for me so it never i i can't i have had clients who said okay now today you are coming and saying that i have need to go for uh, say i i work mostly i work mostly on dotnet technologies so i had a dotnet uh, project where i said okay now you have to move on to dotnet core from dotnet framework because it it gives you more agility and it gives you more freedom to select your platform so mm-hmm. at that time the enterprise architect came and told me i mean today you will tell me you move to dotnet core tomorrow you will tell me you move to dotnet uh, i mean the approach i mean you don't want to be stuck with uh, not agreeing to changes i mean changes i mean change is something that is constant so modernization has been happening continuously and there is a constant need to evolve your application and stay ahead of your competition so if you think that change is going to impact your day to day work uh you should see actually see the value of doing that change mm-hmm. so as long as you see value in keeping yourself evolved and being in a uh, continuous cycle of keeping yourself modernized i think that is modernization i mean sure. you have to be in i mean what is good for you at that point absolutely absolutely and i think the focus has completely shifted from you know a product based approach of developing uh, uh you know solutions to the customer focused solutions right and it becomes yeah. very important that taking what the customers want to them at the earliest when i say yes. at the earliest it cannot be like you know you plan in a traditional way you put your whole team together 
you start developing, then you have your SDLC, or even if you do it in sprints, right? It right. has to go in before the client can expect it. You need to be a step ahead of what your customers want rather than being reactive to respond to, okay, this is what everybody else is doing, so let me also do it, right? And that's where exactly. organization plays a very, very, very important role, right? Yes. But then there are a lot of traditional companies, incumbents who are doing pretty well, right? And yes. I mean, been able to meet their demand, they have been sustaining for so many decades together. So the question to them is, I'm sure there are a couple of them in our audience also who might be interested is like, my business is running fine. I have my applications. They are legacy, but they are, they have a lockdown with the underlying infrastructure, but I'm able, just able to manage today, right? So yes. what is the need for me to modernize my applications? Um, so, yeah. I mean, I feel there is a need for everyone to, I mean, if, if you are in a space where, uh, uh, any anyone else can enter and use technology to beat you, then uh, you are an incumbent. I mean, you are you are threatened. So incumbent, the business model is always threatened because in case of uh, technology, right? So the uh, what happens is uh, the disruptions are quick and it, it's it's very fast. I mean, it's faster than you think. I mean, if I take an example of uh, an incumbent like uh, uh, Kmart. Mm -hmm. So they were at the, they were competitors to Walmart at one time and uh, they are bankrupt. I mean, it, it took them just like a decade and a half almost to just go bankrupt and Walmart was at the same stage, but they, I mean, they were incumbents, but they did some changes that helped them to still stay relevant in today's life. I mean, when Amazon came in, uh, they still could stay relevant because of some changes like maybe deliver to store or uh, uh, making it easier for uh, their customers to shop at their store or changing the business model, but with some other uh, retailers didn't do at that time. So they, they went out of uh, business very soon. I mean, there are other places like uh, if you take the case of uh, um, Blockbuster and uh, Netflix, I mean, it, it was almost a David and Goliath scenario where uh, uh, Blockbuster was a huge, huge uh, uh, media, yeah, uh, media chain where uh, they they were providers of almost eighty percent of uh, uh, DVDs to US. And at the time, Netflix thought they could sell Netflix to uh, Blockbuster, and the only deal uh, or only part of the deal was that Netflix would take care of the online uh, streaming service of uh, Blockbuster, and Blockbuster could. Uh, uh, stay in the market and do the offline DVD business. But uh, I mean, I, I think it's open where uh, Blockbuster laughed at them and tell, I mean, your business model will never work uh, because the technology is not there. And what did Netflix do? Netflix just, I mean, worked on their uh, business model, strengthened it. And within, I think, five years or a decade, they were able to beat Blockbuster and Blockbuster is nowhere now. So Absolutely. incumbents, I mean, if you, uh, there's like a study by McKinsey on why digital strategies fail, uh, where they talk about incumbents business models that are threatened, many don't respond and ultimately fail. Uh, many do respond and uh, at least stay relevant for some time. And then there are bold movers who survive, thrive, and then uh, achieve uh, what uh, achieve the stage where uh, the incumbents were at one stage. I mean, it's, it's the disruptions are much faster in technology than uh, maybe outside of technology. And that's why it's very important to stay relevant. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's what most of these cloud bond companies are. Uh, they are able to disrupt, you know, the, the, the whole market yeah. in their respective spaces is because they come with this, modernized approach. They have adopted all these modern techniques of building applications, the approaches, be it the methodology, be it the implementation and the culture. And that's the reason like, you know, they, they have a lot of market share and, you know, that's, they are able to release so many features to the, to their product without really any of the customers being existing customers being impacted. Right. And right. even roll out releases, uh, you know, multiple releases per day. We, we, we used to talk about where the releases used to be made once in, you know, three months. It came down to monthly, you know, weekly, and today multiple releases, production releases per day is something that they have been able to achieve. And that's only possible because of the modernized architecture, the modernized technologies that they yeah. use in their applications, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you take, yeah. 
yeah if you take the example of uh, i mean an indian company like zeroda mm-hmm. i mean they didn't do anything new or uh, out of the ordinary they they simplified what uh, others had already uh, others have been doing for uh, like almost 2 3 decades i mean icici direct or uh, uh, geojet or a- any of these brokers who were there for a very long time zeroda just did it uh, did the same thing but uh, within a decade zeroda and upstocks have almost one third of the market share in india one third of the trades are done, uh, users are using zeroda instead of say icici direct uh, and what they did is uh, they understood the business and the the thought process was that uh, technology is very difficult to implement but business is easy to understand i mean i can i can learn business but if i do it if i implement my business use case with the right technology with uh, and get it faster to the customers right then i can have a winning solution i think that that's how these new companies or new new uh, breed of uh, technology products come into the markets they say okay technology is difficult to implement uh, let me build a team who is very strong in technology and make make it simple for uh, implementing the changes or bringing changes to the uh, customer and bring it faster and uh, business will will solve the business problems with a strong technology team i think that that's something very critical perfect i think uh, now that we have established you know what are the challenges with the legacy systems and uh, what exactly is modernization and uh, why should we you know move you know modernize these applications today uh, we can now get into the zone of understanding what are the benefits that uh, you know the organizations the corporates and enterprises you know can leverage uh, basically by modernizing their applications so if you could summarize these i know we discussed a couple of these inputs and cases yeah. uh just to be a little more specific so that the audience can understand what are those key benefits that uh, uh you know any any kind of a corporate or enterprise can derive by modernizing their applications yeah i think as i said there uh, during the uh, when we were discussing about the challenges right so it's the challenges are that uh, monolith or legacy applications are uh, slower to market so the change that a business request uh, to bring it to market it's it's very difficult it takes time so the advantage is the key outcomes of modernizations that uh, an organization is to look for is uh, faster time to market so the time between when uh, idea is shared with the it team and when the it team can get it into get this product into the market so that's an advantage or a key business outcome that uh, uh, application should target Uh, and the other one is uh, say i think the uh, the word that everyone uses nowadays is uh, cloud native so build something that can run on any cloud so uh, whether it's um, uh, it, it can still run on prem but build it such that it can run anywhere uh, don't add dependencies or don't add um, uh, like restrictions to your application so it it should be faster to market it should be build anywhere deploy anywhere and uh, make sure uh, so the key the other key outcome should be uh, like what bharat said but you said uh, you can have multiple releases uh, in a day if there is a bug fix required it should be uh, the system should be able to deliver those bug fixes the same day i mean if it's if it's possible so you don't have to have an open fake uh, open vulnerability uh, in, uh, for more than a day you, you, if it's ready it should be able uh, it should be fixed on the same day it, the testing time the deployment time should be quick so if you think about uh, some frameworks or uh, uh, patterns like microservices design pattern so you can make changes you have small bits of transaction transactional programs so they are uh, small enough or uh, they are uh, they are just units of work so they can be deployed and tested uh, they can be modified and tested and deployed in say an hour mm-hmm. maybe i mean i'm just giving an example if it's such a small fix it can be done within an hour so why uh, keep a, a monolith where a small change needs 
a couple of days or a week to get that tested and put into production uh, we can use the uh, we can make use of uh, modern technology a modern uh, framework like ci cd and get these changes out faster mm -hmm. and um, then make use of uh, the uh, new uh, i mean containerization is not new but uh, the way it is implemented now uh, with the services that are available in uh, uh, cloud on cloud are um, uh, new but make use of them such that uh, you can have uh, dynamic scalability so i talked about resources being a constraint or a challenge in uh, a legacy application it's not anymore so when you go to a cloud scenario where uh, uh, you have infinite scalability i mean you have uh, i mean theoretically you have infinite scalability we could uh, just scale as much as you want or even scale down so your costs come down so there's um, all the capital expenses that you had of uh, purchasing all the hardware even though you would need it only during the holiday season so i have worked mostly on uh, retail before uh, this so where most of my computing requirements would be required during the holiday period and you would uh, have resources and servers throughout the year i mean you if you needed uh, say 10 web servers during the holiday period you would have all those 10 web servers running throughout the year Probably. whereas when it comes to uh, when you have a modernized app running on cloud you can scale down i mean your costs almost uh, are are not equal throughout the year you pay as you go pay so I mean, with that kind of model, the key outcome is you are optimizing cost as well here, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you are uh, you are you are not paying for resources that you are not using. You don't need everything throughout the year. So, and during the holiday, you scale up. You have the technology, or you have the. Uh, I mean, if you go for uh, services like uh, Google Kubernetes engines, they scale up. They they orchestrate for you. They do this for you. You don't even have to have a person to like scale up or scale down the resources. To manage service. Yeah. yeah. So, so man, there are multiple managed services. I mean, it's even the databases that scale up and scale down for you. So these are the key outcomes, business outcomes that you need to look for. I mean, you are optimizing cost. Your uh, resources are uh, well managed. Uh, and most of the times they are managed by the cloud, uh, like Google Cloud, uh, Google Cloud itself. And uh, then you have faster time to market and you have, I mean, unlimited scaling. I think those are the key business outcomes I would like, I mean, that Absolutely. come on top right. of my mind. True, true, true. I think if you were to simplify, right, it's, it's something like this. When you build something uh, mm -hmm. which is all tightly coupled to each other, uh, you know, adding more features becomes a problem because every time you have to add a feature, you'll have yeah. to do testing which what is getting, you know, what is broken, how is it impacting some other module, right? But when you get into the modernized approach where you have all these as individual microservices coming together as one engine to run, tomorrow you want to add another feature, you add another couple of microservices which will serve that, right? Yes. And you, yes. Want to, you know, you want to retire a particular feature because it's no longer in use, you can still club it and it, your releases are faster, your end users are not impacted. Right. The best example for that is there's an application called GoCheck, which is like a state of art uh, application in the uh, yeah. you know Asian market like Indonesia. Right. It's it's a go to you know go to app for everybody. Right. From ordering food, booking your cab, making payments, transactions. Like it it's like it, it's like the Swiggy and Zomato of India's, but but with much more additional features that they have. Right. They started yeah. one stream. In the same application, they were able to embed so many various features. And without any users getting impacted, and they they have been building their applications with this whole you know modernized approach, and that's I yeah. think summarizes all the benefits. That's the dynamic scalability, high security, high availability, pay as you go, which brings in cost optimization, and you know bringing down your capex and opex by heaps and bounds, right? And 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 of course the op option to you know kind of uh, monitor everything under one umbrella. Where and uh, you know today in Google we have something called as autopilot modes in most of the cases, right? Yes. For and managing your containers where you just deploy once and you sit and watch, you know, as per the, you know, load, it goes up and down and resources allocation happens automatically where you don't even need to have anyone, but just sit and watch how it's you know, going smoothly. Yeah. That brings us to the next question, right? So we, me and you, we have been working with a lot of clients 
and we have been helping them modernize their applications using the google's ecosystem right yeah. so uh, if you could throw some light on you know, what kind of an ecosystem does google have uh, google cloud have so that it makes easier for our uh, you know customers to kind of embark this modernization journey and you know make it a very smooth sail yeah yeah sure so uh, yeah google cloud as a service uh, as a public uh, cloud provider has multiple services i mean for each of the uh, use cases there are multiple options available for example just just if you think about compute uh, when you think about compute on prem you have a vm you have a web server you host it there i think something that uh, people can relate to is uh, you host multiple applications on the same web server mm-hmm. and uh, when the web server goes down every team complains that it's because of the other team right i mean uh, so here what happens is you there are multiple options for each use cases you can select or you can size it depending on your uh, use case and uh, it, it's it's the number of services available is large and it covers every aspect of programming or an application so if i start by uh, like talking about uh, a- um, analysis so if i go by faces so if i talk about uh, uh, google cloud uh, say there is stratosphere so it's a tool stratosphere sorry so stratosphere allows me to analyze your existing uh, on prem uh, infrastructure it it uh, it gives me an idea about what kind of infrastructure i'll need on prem i mean it starts with analysis yeah and then if i go about uh, talk uh, there's a source repo called google source repository you can use this for uh, version control uh, you can have uh, google cloud uh, google code cloud code as well uh, for uh, uh, code repositories and then you have uh, cloud build so cloud build is a, a building uh, pipeline build pipeline that you can use and i mean i'm talking about very generic uh, use case where you go from okay you analyze you need a source repo then you need a build pipeline and you store i mean you store your built uh, containers in an artifact registry or a package manager like artifact registry and then you have you need uh, somewhere to host this application so either google cloud run uh gke or um uh, you even have a compute engine which is your uh, traditional uh, server infrastructure or uh, your api management so api is a big thing now and google provides one of the best api management solutions like apigee so i've been working with multiple clients who are uh, who have tried multiple other api management tools and are finding apigee very uh useful so when it comes to say analytics or uh, the uh, proxying or any any features for api management apigee is one of the best tools that uh, i have come across i think uh, it's it's one of the leaders in uh, the industry as well and once you say once you have these uh, say you you have assessed you have developed you have migrated and then you have modernized by using these compute solutions then you have to optimize your solution so operating so google cloud provides some of the uh, i think earlier it was called uh, 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 stack driver so we have cloud monitoring and cloud log- logging solutions though they allow you to optimize the application by looking at uh or by uh, like having a sre service reliability engineering team who can look at all the logs who can look at all the monitoring uh, who can do all the monitoring through google cloud itself so it it gives a su- series of applications and services which allow you to do everything on google cloud and some of the best solutions like gk uh gke is one of the better solutions or has been there uh, as a kubernetes orchestrator in a public provider for a very long time now and it it it, it is one of the best products i mean i uh, i am sure many of you might have already heard about uh, kubernetes so 
uh, GK is one of the uh, managed services that Google Cloud provides. So uh, it, it provides a suite of applications and uh, that enable you to run this, uh, uh, run your uh, modernized applications and make use of all the uh, like business uh, key business outcomes that uh, I have discussed above. So mm -hmm. it's it's end to end. I mean, uh, some products like um, I think even migrate for Anthos. So using Anthos, you can run uh, you can run even um, a load on prem plus on cloud. So like a hybrid orchestration of uh, uh, Google Kubernetes engine where. Uh, say if you don't have uh, uh, confidence of moving directly to cloud, you can have your uh, uh, Anthos. You can have Anthos run a hybrid, in, uh, e like hybrid ecosystem where uh, you have your container uh, containers run on prem uh, and on cloud. So it, it's a hybrid uh, scenario. So you can do that as well. So it, I think Google Cloud gives you a host of services that. Uh, can be used or can be utilized to modernize your uh, existing suite of applications. Absolutely. So I think the middleware management comes in with the APG, which is you know, the key differentiator is it's not an API gateway. It's an end-to-end -end API management platform. Management. Where you yeah. can uh, design, develop, deploy, uh, right? Secure, monitor, as well as monetize your APIs. Right? Yeah. All yeah. of these end-to-end -end can be done. You can have multiple versions of your APIs. Exactly. which itself is a modernization of your middleware. And then of course there is Anthos, which is a very unique software-based solution uh, for handling you know, hybrid and multi-cloud kind of a strategy where you can have your workloads on, let's say Azure, AWS, Google Cloud or on-premises, but you have a one single control pane called Anthos where you can push all your policies, monitor all your uh, workloads from one single plane, right? Which brings in a lot yeah. of control in spite of having millions of uh, you know containers, uh, Google literally on a daily basis deploys millions of millions of containers for their products, right? And yeah, yeah. the reason they're able to orchestrate all this you know smaller dots and which come together and work together is because of a uh, you know orchestrator like Kubernetes, which you mentioned, and the GK, which is their uh, managed service of Kubernetes, and with Anthos for a whole you know uh, yeah. hybrid kind of setup, right? Okay. Right. That brings us to the next question. So let's say a lot of them are yet to adopt cloud or yet to embark this journey of modernization. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have already started doing this in one way or the other where you have started working on microservices. You might have started uh, deploying containers or you have even hosted some of your applications or even VMs on cloud, right? But if, yeah. if we were to talk about the modernizing of your applications in the, in the terms that which we mentioned, which we discussed so far, how do we start this uh, journey? Right. So uh, uh, me and others have been helping a lot of clients in a very structured way where we have a uh, you know, whole uh, uh, you know, clearly defined process on if someone wants to embark this journey from where do they start and how do they uh, end their, you know, reach their uh, uh, eventual end goal. Right. So could you throw some more light on that, uh, Adesh, on the process? Sure, sure. So when we, when we pitch or when we go to a client who uh, has decided to modernize their journey. So uh, um, maybe an existing application which they want to modernize or they want to build a greenfield application where we are going to uh, like design and deploy. So we, from design to deployment. So if, if we are doing that, so we, we, allow, we follow some approaches where we have four steps and we start with the discovery or the assessment stage where uh, uh, we look at their current application uh, inventory. We look at what they have. We, uh, I also had uh, briefly discussed about a tool called Stratazone. So we use that for discovery and assessment of their infrastructure. And uh, we approach it, we have a questionnaire, we have a typical set of questionnaires on um, how, how they think uh, their uh, uh, modernization journey should be or we uh, how we could come up with a modernization journey or roadmap based on their uh, vision of their application okay and uh, also we educate them about what features or what things or services they could use uh, from gcp because uh, either they would be new to gcp or we could uh, tell them all the options that are available so we could help them make the right choice and if it's an end-to-end -end solution, we would explain them why we are making use of this uh, solution or why we are evaluating a certain option. So 
after all this we uh, have a technical kick kickoff to end the discovery process and explain them the uh, like designed infrastructure and uh, application landscape so that is how we start so we start with the assessment and discovery and then we move on to the next stage where uh, we like uh, deploy and migrate or uh, plan how the things need to be done so it starts with setting up the landing zone uh, for the cloud setting up uh, the governance the uh, the network topology establishing connectivity because see not Land everything yeah starts with the landing zone and then moves into all these other fixes yeah, well. yeah 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 because not everything uh, not every client would leave their existing application you still need connectivity to your on prem okay. i mean you still need to connect to other applications right so connectivity would need to be established and sometimes it's uh, it might not be a big bang approach where okay today i have it uh, i see your application and i will modernize this application and uh, uh, 10 months later i'll have this application on cloud that might not be a solution for everyone so if say there are some clients where they have immediate problems so they have they need immediate solutions and then they need a solution for the future so uh, i think we have use cases where we do a lift and shift where we uh, there might be immediate wins like move to cloud you make use of the unlimited uh, scaling for example and look at changing the application later i mean go for uh, uh, ready wins so the critical problems if if there is a solution for a critical problem let's solve it now and then look at solving the bigger problem at a later stage mm -hmm. so maybe lift, lift and shift is one of the approaches that we use there and then uh, next next stage next stage is the modernization where we actually refactor replace or re-engineer applications so that's this, this is where uh, the development the heavy lifting and uh, uh, using the actual use of uh, the managed services or uh, gke for the in the example that i spoke about or uh, configuration management using tools and all these things happen in modernization so where we actually have taken a legacy application made it cloud native and hosted it on a cloud service uh, so this is the actual important phase that we uh, implement the solution in and then comes the last phase where uh, uh, we actually optimize the solution so uh, say we have when we design applications we actually make sure that the right logs are um, set up there is monitoring uh, there are metrics that are uh, calculated maybe traces so make sure the application is running as per design so if there are any glaring uh, issues that we see during the monitoring uh, an sre team would be set up would, which would make sure the reliability of the application is as designed so the, the i mean every application needs continuous improvement right i mean in efficiency or the process so i mean uh, it's like okay if i say i had designed uh, the scalability considering only 10000 users and suddenly the application is so popular that uh, i need to uh, manage my scaling uh, i can do that in my optimization phase or if i need to say uh, change the hardware so the other advantage of cloud is that uh, say i went with um, uh, low powered uh, low comp uh, low powered cpu i see that uh, i could gain by using a higher uh, cpu i can do that change i can do that change in this phase and uh, it's not i mean it's i i am not stuck with uh, the resources that i bought in the design phase so i think that's one of the advantages and this is how we approach uh, app modernization in a regular uh, project absolutely absolutely i think that's a very structured approach right so uh, 
um, not everything needs to be modernized not everything needs to be, we can identify which are the low hanging fruits which are the more complex ones yeah come up with the whole modernization strategy step by step it wouldn't happen over a day right like you said solve the immediate problems how maybe a lift and shift would work in that case but uh, if if i have enough time or if i have not yet decided on which cloud to move on but i still have a problem where uh, you know it's a very monolithic architecture that I have that's what we what we do is we improve which means we bring in the cloud nativeness to that particular application by modernizing it with uh, let's say microservices or using some on premises uh, you know kubernetes kind of a thing and keep it cloud ready and when the let's say the management decides okay this is the cloud that we want to go ahead with that we just move it to the cloud you already have a cloud native application then you deploy it on the cloud which makes it more easier so that's one yeah. route a lift and shift and then improves another route but if uh, for the low hanging ones where you know you don't have a lot of very business critical uh, in applications uh, or even a lot of integrations that's where you can take this build uh, you know move and rebuild or rebuild and yeah. modernize like we call it right? where you can uh, take a monolithic application break it into microservices bring in containers and deploy it on cloud compared to what you had done earlier in on prem right so that is like one of the best routes to take and you will start seeing all the benefits at one go right so this is yeah. how it goes so these are some of the best practices so there are some other best practices also right when it comes to legacy applications there's a lot of emotions involved yeah. there is a lot of hard work that has gone in you know people gauge the success based on how much how many years i have spent in building this application rather than how relevant it is today or uh, how can how you know how this legacy system is actually causing problems to take more features to the market right so there is a lot of Uh, you know uh, emotions that come in or you know maybe even a skill set maybe it was built with cobalt back then so what am i going to do now do i have to retire that application or do i still retain it so there are some best practices with respect to you know how an application how do we identify this can you throw some light on that uh, yeah Arush? yeah uh, i i think the theme i mean the theme that, uh, or the um, concept or the thinking that Uh, you should go in with a modernization is uh, that no two solutions are going to be identical right i mean it's not always going to be like uh, rebuild and uh, modernize where i see a solution and i six months down the line i give you a new solution there's a lot of uh, applications there is a lot of dependency on every application and there's a lot of work that needs to be done during this modernization phase and each solution for every i mean even for the same client there might be two scenarios where uh, the uh, workload that that uh, the that follows is quite different i mean the phase or the um, i mean the steps that we follow or the application modernization uh, theory that we follow is quite, quite different so when it comes to uh, modernization uh best practices we follow the seven rs we follow we we use we we do retain we retire rehost replatform refactor replace and rebuild so these are the seven rs that form the foundation of our uh, modernization uh, best practices so uh, for retain and retire there's no migration nothing happens i mean the applications remain uh, legacy i mean uh, say there's no value that uh, there to be, uh, to be gained by modernizing it a simple example would be something that is used internally uh, may not be mod- uh, i mean there's no requirement to be modernized it, it's working fine and with our uh, vision of modernizing it will still work fine so we I- we identify that it will work fine and with our there might be some constraints as you said i mean technology or uh, skill sets we could make use of those skill sets to keep running these applications so there's no migration required and even in case of retire so if i see that there is an application that is already duplicating or has been duplicated by some other application we could easily retire them i mean you don't need to spend effort in modernizing them or uh, creating a solution for that so re- retain and retire no effort we just don't migrate okay and then comes rehost so simple lift and shift i think you covered that in the last part where you said yeah. okay uh, we don't need to change anything in the code or we don't need to change anything in the application we just ro- uh, rehost it in a new platform so if, if you're already using for, for example cloud native technologies you could just uh, containerize it and rehost it in uh, gke for example so there's very little effort in this case and uh, replatform maybe 
it's say a dotnet core application which was hosted on windows server you pay a lot for the license you can just replatform it on linux or you can just move it on cloud where you host it on a linux uh, os so you you have optimized your cost you have uh, optimized the i mean in in many cases uh, because of the uh, small footprint of some of the linux os's you are even improving the performance of the application so that's the advantage of creating your app in a cloud native technology where uh, e even even when you host it on prem uh, you get some advantages and then you're not you're building it once and you're building it for the cloud you can host it anywhere so in if if there is an application like that we just go for a read platform where the application is already ready for uh, cloud so we do that and then comes some things which are like a more exp we call it more expensive for uh, modernization so refactor replace or rebuild so refactoring you use the same uh, maybe the code base or the application but you make some changes so that they become cloud native or they make it easier to host it on cloud and uh, then comes replace which is slightly even more expensive because of the amount of change that you will make uh, so you uh, say replace legacy systems with uh, maybe a SaaS product or yeah, it's easier to support because uh, your team doesn't need to do anything, but it might be costly because you are going to pay a subscription fee for that. Uh, but you'll at least get it faster to the market. Then the last one is uh, the rebuild. So if if none of these six are satisfy your uh, application use case, then you will go for rebuild where the entire application is just uh, modernized using new technology. It, it would take a lot of time. It would uh, entail the cost, but you would get a solution which is more uh, customer face. I mean, it, it's better for the customer. So you get it faster to market, you get it, you get infinite scalability, you remove the dependency on uh, cloud technology, you make it cloud native. So you get all the advantages, key business you, um, uh, uh, like uh, advantages, but it's, it's costly. So we go through the steps uh, so that we optimize, I mean, depending on the use case or the uh, client's vision of modernization, we uh, optimize the cost. I mean, I would say optimize time and cost. Both are, both are very important. So if uh, in some cases it would be costly to make this change, but the outcome of that uh, would be something that uh, is the vision of the company. Uh, correct. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers uh, all the seven hours, right? And the importance yeah. of why or how we do it. Uh, and we have been doing this for uh, quite a bit of our clients. And I see, uh, you know, a couple of our audiences are also from the BFSI segment. And while BFSI is the ones which is slightly late to adopt any kind of such changes because of the, you know, surrounding uh, 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 you know, privacy with respect to the uh, customer details, customer accounts, transactions, etc. Right. But, yeah. uh, you know, you'd be surprised to know that, you know, pretty much all the banks in India are taking this modernized approach while their core systems still are on premises, which run on our traditional stack and the traditional way of doing it. But they are building all these customer facing applications, whether it's customer onboarding, whether it's the transactions, whether your mobile apps to you know do funds transfer, generate your statements, request a checkbook, all these customer facing applications are being built with the modernized architecture, right? So yeah. we have been helping some of our clients. So if you could uh, you know walk us through a couple of case studies where we're helping both BFSI and non-BFSI clients, I think that would be of most interest to our audience here today. Sure, sure. So I've been working with uh, some of the BFSI clients to help them modernize their uh, applications. And I think one of the uh, key ones that I started with here at uh, Nevius and uh, on Google Cloud was uh, LSE Housing Finance. I think this was a use case where we did end-to-end -end, uh, infrastructure development for them. So we, um, I, I think we did both in this case where um, we immediately, there, there was an immediate need for an app. So we did build a uh, app for them, which was, uh, which used uh, the, uh, which was, uh, I think we, we used uh, uh, the microservice architecture. Uh, it was built on, uh, Rea uh, I mean, the um, uh, cloud native technologies. Uh, it uses GKE for uh, the microservice infrastructure. Uh, it uses all the uh, cloud storage for storing uh, blobs, so files or object storage, and it uses the uh, 
uh, cloud databases like PostgreSQL uh, and reduces costs. And it's still uh, technologies, right? For yeah, uh, scanning yeah. of the pan and other card, which makes it, yeah. which makes the whole customer experience also very rich and easy. You know, in a matter of minutes, you have your loan application sent and a pre-approved. Correct. So it, it's like, I mean, uh, Google has a lot of uh, uh, these uh, MI, uh, AL, AI ML uh, features, like I think what you said, OCR. So we used uh, uh, Google OCR for uh, uh, reading uh, pan details from the uploaded pan and uh, validating against the customer enter details. And host of features that were used. I mean, in the first phase, we just built an app using all the cloud native features. It was delivered in a quick time. And then we went to the second phase we were, where we are uh, modernizing the entire landscape of their API management. So we are using Apigee there, where um, uh, whether it's their chatbot or, I mean, we have created API products where um, uh, the security is managed by Apigee itself. And uh, we are making sure that um, the times, the, um, uh, we are making use of the analytics of uh, Apigee such uh, to understand the usage of the services. So even if say a good use case for analytics is to understand how a third party API is performing. Is it the app, uh, say, is it the API call that is late or is it the third party API that we are calling is late? So it gives you the details about how long did the actual target endpoint uh, take and how, uh, how much time did the proxy execute in? So that kind of analytics is available in Apigee. So we are making use of Apigee and it's, it's a suit that we are digital suit that we are building uh, of APIs that LSE HFL is using. And we are still integrating with their on-prem database so that their LOS is still running. And uh, it's, it's an onboarding app and onboarding platform that we are building for them where uh, the initial step of collecting documents and uh, initiating the loan is done through uh, the app. And then um, the actual LOS is in still on-prem. So we have connectivity between Google Cloud and on-prem. And there are APIs, any APIs that uh, are uh, not so facing or internet facing are exposed through Apigee. And we, we actually manage so it, it's not an API gateway like what uh, uh, Bharat had already told. It's it's an API management tool. So if tomorrow any external uh, uh, website like uh, maybe uh, Bank Bazaar or any any I mean I'm just giving an example. So if they decide to use uh, uh, LSE HFL, we can create an API product and give them the credentials and only give them access to. Uh, a specific set of APIs and that is very easy to manage. So we have built an ecosystem for them and it's been very easy using the features or services that have been provided by Google Cloud and uh, adding new features like maybe deposits into the same app has been easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't need to change the entire app. I just need to add a few microservices, a few screens and flows and uh, getting that into production is not as difficult as it would have been with a monolith app. Absolutely. And we can do this without impacting the existing features. I yeah, and I think most of us have already reaped the benefits of it. I mean, I for am one very happy, satisfied customer of LIC Housing Finance. You know, I have my own loan with them. Uh, uh, and it helped me immensely even during the uh, entire uh, you know lockdown, the unfortunate pandemic that we have been going through for a while exactly. now. We're able to disperse crores and crores of retail and corporate loans using this particular application, right? And it was yes. seamless. And even today, we are almost nearing the tax filing season. So, uh, you know, the pilot or the, the MVP did not really have a customer portal, right? It was more on customer onboarding part of it. And yeah. then they're very quickly able to add the you know, customer portal also to it, where the customers, existing customers can log in to the transaction, pay their uh, EMIs, dues, fees, uh, download the repayment certificate. So it's all been a very seamless integration of these features. And once the, and it's been a you know regular releases of, you know, various features. And like you yes. said, now the deposits are coming onto it. So this is a clear cut example of how a modernized application would look like and how easy it is for, you know, anyone who has this, who has implemented it to take features to the market very fast and 
scale has never been a problem. You know, there's 15,000 odd agents who have been onboarded on the same app. And, you know, they have more than almost 2 lakh applications that they have, uh, uh, you know, received on this particular yeah. platform. So, which talks about the scale where they didn't have to invest on the CapEx and OPEX and the cloud is there. And the cost is, you know, the monthly bill that comes from their public cloud service provider for as per the usage. It's a very transparent system. And I think that yeah. summarizes the whole, uh, 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 you know, benefits that one can get by modernizing applications, both from the customer experience point of view and also from your cost and infra and the performance point of view for you as a corporate or an enterprise, right? Uh, we're kind yeah. of coming to the end of time. Uh, we've kind of breached it, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> discussing these things are, you know, always uh, fun and, you know, informative because uh, we are very, we, we feel very happy that we have been able to implement these and help you know, partner in our customer journeys in modernizing them and you know where we have been able to boost their businesses so it's always a proud feeling to talk about those uh we can maybe take one or two questions uh, before we uh, you know wind up um okay there is one question which says how can you ensure that data protection in applications on cloud compared to on premises legacy systems all right uh, i i'll take that question probably others you can add on to it right yeah. so Yes. Uh, unlike the myth with respect to Google Cloud, at least, right, where there is a myth around, you know, your data is accessed by Google and all that, your data is always your data. The application that you are accessing, the data, the, you know, the data that is stored in a cloud database is encrypted end-to-end -end both at transit as well as at rest. Nobody will have access to it other than the folks whom you have given access through the cloud identity access management, which you, you know, kind of set up as a part of the landing zone while you're deploying your project, right? So the customer data is always must, or not customer data, any data by default, which is on Google Cloud is always encrypted, right? And you can bring in your own key management system. The Google offers its own KMS, Google KMS, where you can have multi, multi-factor uh, encryption or multi-factor things on this particular data. If you have your own keys, if you have your own logic, you can bring that and deploy it and also add on to it, right? Which would give you multi-factor uh, protection even on your data. Right. Uh, anything that you would like to add, Adarsh, on this? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's still the application's responsibility. So whether it's Google Cloud or uh, so Google, make sure that your data is protected with respect to the services that it gives. But if you are leaking data through your application, it's still your responsibility. Yes. So data is secure when it's stored on Google Cloud. But if your application is not secure enough, uh, that's your responsibility. And it, it's not. Mm -hmm that google has it like that it's every every application every, on, cloud, yeah. uh, every cloud i mean even on prem i mean um, you you are responsible for everything but when it comes to securing data on cloud versus on prem uh, i think as you said i mean the keys the management of keys is different uh, maybe different. I mean, you can still use a cloud service on-prem to store your keys like HashiCorp or uh, even, I mean, you can use uh, Google Cloud Key Manager for uh, your on-prem application. So that shouldn't, I mean, that shouldn't be a concern if you're talking to me. So it's still your responsibility, but you can do that very well. Yeah, yeah. And while you're building your applications, you need to take care of, you know, where the, how your data is getting exposed and all that, right? While, like I said, once it is on cloud, it is always encrypted and protected. But as a part of your application, the team that is going to build this modern application has to take the ownership of, you know, the security aspect of their with respect to data. Uh, great. Uh, I mean, we'd, uh, we'd be happy to take more questions, but I think we are running out of time. So uh, we'd be, if you could reach out to us, uh, 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 you know, and, you know, post our questions or, you know, mail them to us, we'd be more than happy to get back to you. And if you are interested in knowing more, uh, in understanding how we have done it, you know, more details on the case studies that we have done, uh, you know, if your teams are interested, please reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to take them. I think there is one more uh, question. Probably we can take that before we wind up, uh, how we would be able to build integration with cloud based solution, right? Uh, again, I think we just spoke about in length about EPG, right? Where uh, if we, if we well, see uh, modern applications are always built with an API first uh, kind of an approach, right? So uh, if you have this and if you have an API management system as a part of your uh, uh, applications infrastructure or the architecture, right? Both you exposing your services to the other cloud applications to consume via an API also becomes very secure and you can give only that information what is required. At the same way, even your application that you have built, it can integrate with any other third party system, which is, you know, exposing their uh, data or their information via an API, right? So consuming as well as letting someone consume your API has become a very easy, easy process once you have a very modernized application. 
right uh, others anything to add on that one no i think that that's good i mean these these solutions like apg have been created around solving these problems i mean solving the problem of integration so Absolutely. no matter where the data is being served to you apg provides a entry way into get that data i mean uh, uh, chatbot i mean in, in the case of uh, lic chatbot also accesses the same data which my loan management system accesses but uh, they don't know they have different credentials so it, it makes it secure it makes it uh, manageable for me that that's why it's an api management tool where um, the entire integration is managed to a single portal and it gives pockets of data to everyone you give you give minimum access to everyone so only access that is required so that's how uh, you need to secure your services you just don't open to all i mean you just don't make it open to all yeah yeah i think that answers your question it is a, a, a pg is an a, is a google uh, you know api end to end api management platform from uh, google cloud right uh cool so i think uh, let me just quickly summarize so we discussed what are the challenges with the legacy systems uh then you know we discussed why is modernization important why is, what is modernization in the first place in today's context uh in today's world uh right and uh what why should someone and i think that pretty much answers the question right it's not about why should someone modernize it's a question about when you're going to do it right because eventually everybody will have to do it if you want to survive the competition and you know kind of boost your businesses in your respective industry verticals could be bfsi healthcare manufacturing retail or any of these right telecom or media as well right and then we spoke about the best practices and what kind of skills that we need how do we need to approach it what is a step by step that is a discover you know migrate uh, then implement and then optimize kind of the phases that are involved in you know any kind of a application modernization strategy uh then we spoke about the you know the, the kind of ecosystem that google has in order to support the application modernizations and also a few case studies where we have been helping our clients in modernize and you know the kind of benefits they are able to reap out of it right uh, so thank you thanks a lot others for sharing these uh, you know valuable in, inputs and you know for your time and i i believe it and i had fun talking this to you and you know it was very informative i'm sure we had almost you know 70 80 plus audience who were who had joined us today and they were also able to understand the importance of application modernization and uh, uh, which is pretty much the objective of this particular webinar right yeah. so thank once you. again thank you all for joining us and uh, have a great evening cheers thank you bye